Namaste yogis. Welcome to your practice. This is Stephen from YogaWorks and this class is called the Yin and the Yang. In this class, actually it should be called the Yang and the Yin because we'll start with the Yang part. Now the Yang is the uh, qualities inside us that we often call the masculine, but actually they are the, the harder, the strength, the fast, the referring to the sun and the daytime, the, the part in us that is driven and is pushing forward and is um, strongly acting to get results. Now there's another part which is equally important called the yin, sometimes called our feminine qualities which are soft, which are relaxed, which are yielding, which are more intuitive, more in touch with our feelings and emotions. And I'm not referring to men or women here, I'm referring to masculine and feminine qualities, which we both have. And actually the success that we experience in our lives is gonna come from how well we can balance those two sides. Very often in these modern times, we celebrate the hard, the strong, the fast, the pushing, and we neglect a little bit the practice of letting go, of allowing, of uh, resting, of restoring ourselves, of nurturing uh, ourselves and others around us. So this is what we're practicing today, the balance between the two. And in physically, in this practice, we're gonna use the first half an hour or so to move quite vigorously, quite actively, building a little bit of heat. And then in the second half, we'll slow it right down and we'll experience some yin style, longer holds, deep stretches, letting go, no muscular effort. So it's really nice to see the balance of these two um, extremes, you could say. And we're going to be working on attaching equal importance and uh, attention to both of these. Nice. So come to down facing dog. This is the yang part of the class as you can imagine. We'll start with that. So come straight into down dog. It's a strong, it's a demanding pose. And see if you can set this up so you can really feel the four points of support through your hands and through your feet. The head can be relaxed. Just let it hang between your upper arms. But it's quite a strong shoulder activity to broaden your upper back, to lengthen the arms and under the armpits, to slide your hips all the way up and back behind you. And then from there to stretch the backs of the legs so that the heels are reaching down in the direction of your mat. And then slowly you walk your feet forward to the front. Place your feet hip distance and then do a slow spinal roll to come up to standing. Roll your shoulders back a couple of times. And then place your palms together at the heart. So here we go, we're going to start moving continuously with the breath, not fast, but without lots of pauses. And in the second half, there'll be lots of Time to pause and relax. Inhale, rise and reach up. Exhale, go all the way down. Relax the head. Inhale to flat back, stretch your chest forward. Exhale, fold again. Use your belly to pull yourself forward. Now inhale, reach all the way up with your arms. Stretch out through the fingertips. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, follow the breath all the way to the top. Exhale, relax as you fold forward. Inhale to lengthen the chest forward, flat back. Push your shins with the hands. Exhale to fold. You can always bend your knees here, it feels nice. Inhale, all the way up. Press the feet down to lengthen. Exhale, hands to the heart. Continuing inhale, we're just building a bit of rhythm between the breath and the movement. Exhale, fold and dive down. Inhale to lengthen. And exhale, this time just step into down dog. 
couple of times, inhale, we're shifting to plank. Exhale, we're shifting back to down dog. Feel free to bend your knees if you like to. Inhale, shift forward to plank, shoulders over the wrists. Exhale, push the hands so you get back to down dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. Two more. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. Follow the breath. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. Now we're changing it up a little bit. Same rhythm of breath. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower all the way down. Inhale, push all the way up. Exhale to down dog. If it's hard, just use your knees or just do what you can. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, push up. Exhale, down dog. This is two more. Inhale, starting to warm up right from the start. Exhale, lower. Inhale, how can you get back to plank? Figure it out. Exhale, down dog. One more, inhale. Feel the strong, fast, and unyielding nature of the yang practice. Inhale, push up. Exhale, down dog. This time, inhale, plank. We'll change it up again. Exhale, lower. Inhale, little back bend, cobra. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, plank. Exhale to down dog. One more like this. Inhale, plank. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, roll the shoulders back, cobra. Exhale, lower down. Tuck toes, inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. Walk the feet forward to the front of the mat. Bend your knees a little bit. Roll up to standing. Mountain pose, hands to heart. Two half sun salutations to remember the rhythm and then we'll start to add different movements. Inhale, take your arms all the way up. Exhale and fold forward. Inhale, chest goes forward, flat back. Exhale to fold and bend the knees slightly. Inhale, take it all the way up, reach through the fingers. Exhale, hands to heart. One more like this, inhale. Feel the whole body work together. Exhale to fold. Inhale, lengthen, feel the focused attention of your mind. Exhale to fold down. Inhale, rise, go all the way up. How tall can you get? Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale. Continue. Exhale, arms go wide and fold over the legs. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, this time, fingertips down, right foot back. Lower the knee for the first one. Inhale, low lunge pose. Lift the arms. Lower the hands. Downward facing dog. Inhale, shift forward to plank. Exhale, you can use your knees, bend your elbows and slowly lower down. Reach your hands back, lift the chest, lift the legs, locust pose. And exhale, down dog, maybe through the push-up, see how you get there. Inhale, lift the right leg high. Exhale, step the right foot forward, left knee down. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the arms. Exhale, hands down, step forward, fold. Inhale, root to rise. Here we go. Exhale, hands back to heart. Continuing the left side, inhale. Exhale, follow the breath all the way down. Inhale, takes you to flat back, push the shins. Exhale, fingertips down, left foot back, lower the knee. Inhale, lift into low lunge, squeeze the legs together. Exhale to down dog, step back. 
Inhale, plank pose. Lower the knees, exhale slowly, lower the belly and the chest at the same time. Inhale, locust pose, reach your hands back, chest forward. Exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg high. Exhale, big step forward, back knee down. Inhale, lift the chest, look up. Exhale, hands down, step to the front. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. One more round like this, then we'll change it up. Inhale, lift your fingertips. Exhale, fold all the way forward, relax the head. Inhale to flat back, chest slides forward. Exhale, right foot back. This time, keep your knee lifted, lift the arms, high lunge. Lower the hands, nice. Step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, shift to plank. This time you can choose knees down or you keep the knees up. Chaturanga, chest goes forward, elbows 90 degrees or a bigger angle is also fine. Inhale, upward facing dog or you can stay with the cobras or the locusts. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, the right leg high. Exhale, step it forward for high lunge. Inhale, lift the arms, one breath only. Exhale, hands down and fold. Inhale, rise, go all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Stop fast, but it's continuous. Feel the heat that we're building here. Inhale, go all the way up. Exhale, fold forward. Of course, if you need a break at any time, you can take one. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, left foot back for high lunge. Inhale, lift the arm. If it's possible, stay with it because we'll be taking it really easy the whole second half of the class. Exhale, hands down, downward facing dog. Inhale, shift forward, plank. With or without knees, chaturanga, bend your elbows. Inhale to upward facing dog or another back bend. Exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale to lift the left leg high. Exhale, step forward and lift up for high land. Inhale, one breath here, strong legs. Exhale, hands down, fold. Inhale, rise, go all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Continuing, bend your knees, touch your fingers next to your toes, and when you're ready, lift the arms, but keep your hips low. Sit the hips down and back. Lift the chest. Check your facial expression. This is not high on people's list of favorite yoga poses ever, but we learn a lot. This is called a fierce pose, so feel the burn in your quads, Feel the strength around your center, feel the strong determination and bend your knees more, 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 more and sit down for boat pose. If this is really hard to just hold the backs of the thighs, pull the chest forward, shoulders back. If you want more intensity, it's always possible, you can reach your hands forward and keep a nice lift in the chest here. Nice. From here, straighten the legs. Connect the lower back to the mat, but don't touch the heels, don't touch the shoulders. This is a half boat. We're here for two more breaths. If you want to, you can hold the back of the head, lean the head back a little bit, and pretend you're on holiday. Ouch. Three, two, one, lift back up, knees to chest, well done. Cross your legs, step into down dog. Take a breath, this is our mini break. Okay, that was the mini break, I told you. It was short, inhale, 
the right leg high. And then bend your right knee, open the hip to the side. And on the exhale, bring right knee across towards the left elbow. Two more times. Inhale, right leg up and back, open the hip. Exhale, right knee across to left elbow. One more. Inhale, right leg opens. Exhale, across to left elbow. And step the right foot forward. Good. Place the feet so they're firmly planted. Lift up, high lunge. Lift your arms. Pull the feet together underneath you. Of course, they're not going anywhere. They're stuck on the mat. But you feel the lift through the core, through the spine, all the way up to the crown of the head and the arms. Nice. Lower the hands. Step your back foot in a little bit closer and turn the heel down. And then as much as possible, pull that right hip back. This is going to straighten the right knee a little bit more. It doesn't have to be always straight, but if it happens, that's good too. Lengthen the chest forward. Now place your left hand inside the right foot. And then place the right hand on the lower back. And then keep the legs the same, but just to start to turn the chest to the right. Any amount is fine. And you can stay here, or the right arm can lift up into revolved triangle pose. Nice. From here, right hand to right hip. Look a little bit forward, slide that left hand forward, a big step. And then step onto your right leg, lift the left leg high. Place your hand on the lower back again, the right hand. Just to feel the sacrum is more as level, the hips are more as level, as best as you can tell. And then turn the chest to the right again. And lift the right arm up. Stretch up, up, up through the right fingers. Squeeze the hips together. And from here, Start to bend the standing leg a little bit. Bend the left knee, bring it next to the right. And we're going to stand up, holding the left knee. Stand up tall, chest proud, shoulders back. If you fall out, doesn't matter. Even if you fall out 20 times, then just come back. 21. Hold the left knee with your right hand. And, oops, <laughs> I cheated, I used the wall to stay up. Twist the left arm back. Nice, from here, release the front knee, reach the right hand forward, left arm back. Three, two, one, right hand down. Left leg up for half moon, so we did the revolved half moon. And this is the, the straight one. Lift that outer left hip up, as well as the left leg. Now bend the standing leg, keep your weight forward, forward, forward. Let the left leg lower down softly, find the mat. Warrior two. Nice, a couple of times, lift the arms straight at the front leg. Exhale to bend the front knee again. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, bend. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale, bend a little bit deeper. Keep the front knee bent. Left hand to left thigh. Right arm over, reverse warrior, lean back. And then right elbow to right thigh, left arm over, side angle. Again reverse, lean back with the right arm, this time straight in the front leg. And then reach right hand forward. Right hand can connect to the right shin, the left arm can go straight up. Or 
If it's available, right hand can touch down. If that doesn't feel good, just stay a little bit higher up, I'd recommend it. Nice, lower the hands down, either downward facing dog, or you can do inhale to plank, exhale to chaturanga or lower all the way down, inhale to up dog, cobra, locust pose, exhale to downward facing dog. Take a breath. Second side inhale, the left leg high. Open the left hip and bend the left knee. Twist into it a little bit. And then left knee goes across to right elbow. You don't need to touch it, but you might. Inhale, open the left hip, reach back. Exhale, go across. One more, inhale. Exhale. Step your left foot forward, high lunge, lift the arms, strong legs. If the back knee bends a little bit, that's, that's fine. From here, lower the hands, step your back foot in a little bit and turn the heel down, about 45 degrees in the back foot, or even the toes a bit more forward, I'd recommend pull the left hip back, lengthen your heart forward, and if it so happens, the left leg might straighten or it might not. Don't worry too much about these little details. Right fingertips, I like to stay in the fingertips for this. Inside left foot, left hand lower back, turn the chest to the left. You can stay here or for a moment, lift the left arm, revolve, triangle. Nice. Left hand, left hip, look forward, take your right hand a big step forward, lift the right leg behind you, the chest keeps going forward, and then again, turn to the left, maybe the left arm straightens up, revolved half moon, really activate your legs, and then the twist will follow from there. Nice, now bend, both legs, let the right knee come next to the left, and then come to standing, holding your right knee with both hands. Straighten out the chest, push the left foot down, hold the right knee with the left hand, and take your right arm back. If you feel super stable today, you might look towards the side, or even Spot the right thumb in the corner of your right eye. If you fall out, no problem. And now, slowly coming back to center. Half moon pose, the left hand comes down. The right leg and the arm lift up. Expand in all directions. Now bend the standing knee, there's no rush. Right foot. Landed really softly all the way at the back for warrior two. Couple of dynamic movements. Inhale, straighten the arms and the front leg. Exhale to rebend. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Enjoy the flow of breath. Enjoy the heat. We're building the body. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale, reverse, inhale, side angle, left elbow down, right arm over, exhale, back to reverse, but this time straight in the front leg, and keep the leg straight, left hand reaches forward, you can lower onto the shin, maybe onto the mat, and the right arm goes high, triangle pose. One more inhale, lower hands down, down dog, or plank, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, there's no rush, but we'll keep moving. Exhale, downward facing dog. So now we'll flow through this whole little sequence 
Again, one breath, one movement. Here we go. Inhale, right leg high. Bend the right knee, open the hip. Exhale, right knee, left elbow, cross. Inhale, open and lean back. Exhale, cross over. Right knee, left elbow. One more, inhale. Exhale, right knee, left elbow. Step the right foot forward. High lunge, lift the arms. Strengthen the legs. Lower the hands. Step in a little bit closer. Turn the back heel down. Pyramid pose. Fold for just a breath. Left hand stays down. Right arm goes up. Revolved triangle. Squeeze the hips together. And then move left hand forward. Lift the left leg. Lift the right arm and twist. Revolved half moon. Nice. Left knee to chest. Hold it with both hands. Come up. Hold left knee with the right hand. Or alternatively hold left foot with the right hand. Left arm back. Straight into half moon. Right hand down. Left leg and the left arm up. Nice. Try to land softly. Bend your standing leg into warrior two. One movement this time. Straighten, lift the arms. Exhale, rebend. Reverse. Side angle, right elbow down, left arm over. Reverse again, this time straighten the front leg. And triangle pose, Trikonasana. Cartwheel the hands down. Rest in down dog for a moment or slow vinyasa, there's no rush. Keep moving. We'll be resting just now, but for now, keep the energy flowing. Inhale, the left leg high. Bend the left knee, open the hip. And then left knee, right elbow. Inhale, open. Exhale, cross. One more, inhale. Exhale, cross. Building some heat, step the left foot forward. Lift the arms. Hope you're starting to warm up, high lunge. From here, hands down, step the back foot in a bit, turn the heel down. Pyramid pose, Parshvottanasana, left hip back, chest long. Right hand down, left arm up. Revolve triangle, keep pulling the left hand back. Right hand, a big step forward, lift the right leg. Revolve half moon. Right knee comes to chest. Can you hold it and come up? Straighten the left leg. You can hold the knee, or if it's available today, you can hold the outer edge of your foot. Kick it into your hand, reach the right arm back. Even if that right knee doesn't straighten, it's not very important. And then release left hand down, half moon. And land softly, bend the left knee and warrior two. Only one time, this time, inhale, arms up. Exhale, rebend the front knee, nice. Right hand down, left arm up, lean back. Left elbow down, right arm over, lean forward. Inhale, back to reverse, but with a straight front leg. Exhale, triangle pose, Trikonasana. Left hand down, right arm up. And then lift back up this time. Turn the feet parallel. Hands to hips. Inhale, lift the heart. Look up. Exhale to lean forward, forward, forward. And lower the hands. You can stay here. If 
the hands don't touch down. If you're more here, then you just have hands on the hips instead. You can also use blocks. Or if you have a little bit more space, you can walk the hands a little bit back between the feet and then use the arms to pull your upper body a little bit lower. Where your head end up, ends up is not really important here. We're targeting inner thighs and the hamstrings mostly. And we're targeting the, a strong solid foundation through this triangle shape in the legs over which the upper body can fold. Right, so holding for another few breaths or so. If you love to go upside down, then you can place the head down and maybe lift the feet for a really brief hit stand if this is in your practice. Otherwise, ignore this and then open legs wide for if you're upside down. How softly can you land? Everyone come up to flat back. Walk your hands to your left foot, to the front of your mat, and step back into child's pose. I like to open the knees a little bit wider, sit the hips back on the heels, and then maybe make a pillow with the hands to rest your forehead, or what you can also do is reach the hands back behind you. So this is it, we've strengthened, we have built up a sweat. We move through quite an active and demanding sequence, a couple of times even. We've pushed our body, we've used our muscles, we created some heat around the joints. Our heart rate went up. Our breath went up. That is the yang side of the coin. There are two sides of the same coin. And now we have just invited our body to rest down on this Mother Earth underneath us which is always supporting us, always reliable. We can be sure of this support. And now we're inviting the body to soften the heart, the heart rate to slow down, the breath to slow down. With every exhale, you might feel your body sinking deeper and deeper into this resting pose, child's pose. Often the hard, fast, strong qualities are honored more than the nurturing, grounding, slowing down qualities. But here we experience the ultimate union of these two. The strength that lies in stepping back, not pushing harder, taking a break, nurturing and grounding. Take a few more breaths in this resting pose, feeling the upper body heavy on the legs, feeling the breath in your belly, in your lower back, and wherever else you can direct it. To 
just take another moment to appreciate this staying here, not rushing anywhere. Taking as long as we need to recover after periods of intensity and challenge. And then really slowly start to roll your way up. And you can stay more or less like this, but just tuck your toes under and push your knees up and keep the balls of the feet together here. And then open the knees a little bit wider and start to fold your upper body down inside the knees. You might be a little bit higher up, it really doesn't matter. But see if you can just soften into this pose. The heels feel heavy down towards the mat. Mine definitely don't touch the mat, it's not necessary. But just feel a gentle stretch in the calves, the backs of the lower legs. And then this is really nice to lengthen the lower back. And then what I like to do is just to rest the elbows down. You might also need to elevate your elbows up a bit if you've got a blanket or something nearby. A pillow will also work. And then relax the head. Feel this gentle curve in the spine. And again, feel this grounding and softening quality. The sense we're taking tender loving care of this body and mind of ours. So that next time when there's a period of intensity again, a big challenge coming our way, we are able to put in that effort to stand up and do what's needed. But often that strength and power comes from these moments of introspection, of stepping back, of filling up our cup. A bit like the oxygen masks on the plane, they come out, you put on yours first, and only after that you help other people. See if you can soften even more into this, make the heels heavy, make the lower back long and spacious. Feel the chest and the head just hang down. And then breathe into any tight spots in the back body. And then slowly release. Start to lower the knees down and then just lower onto your belly. Yeah? And come up onto your elbows. So we're coming to Sphinx pose. The further forward you slide your arms, the less intense it's going to be. And if you bring your elbows closer, you'll feel a deeper back bend. So an, an arching of the spine. And so just choose your level of intensity. Just because it's slow and grounding doesn't mean it is not intense or challenging, but it's in a different way. The one is more cardio, the heart rate goes up, we might shake and tremble, and then this one is more intensity in the longer holds, in the staying in place, in the not escaping, even when things are hard. You can always relax the head down, or just look forward, there's no need to lift your head up. That would not be very comfortable here. And then with the legs, you could even walk the legs a little bit further apart if you like to. And what might be nice is to turn the feet out or to just let the feet flop out. 
So unlike the yang part of the practice, we don't need to activate our muscles. We're turning our attention more to the connective tissue that, that binds all the parts of our body together and unifies it. It gives it its shape and resilience. And here the change doesn't come from a quick engagement of the muscle and powering through. It comes from a longer hold and allowing gravity to do its work. So we're holding these poses for maybe longer than you might be used to. Often two to three minutes is a good, it's a good start. And in some will feel like your body's lapping this up. It's exactly what you need. You love this shape and you could stay there forever. And then for other ones, it's going to be a bit more intense. You can't wait to get out for that two or three minute mark. If you've got a deep back bend, you want to make this a little bit more intense. There is another variation of this pose where you turn the hands out and you straighten the arms. You're hanging from the shoulders. Closer to you is going to be more intense. Further away from you is going to be a little bit easier. So choose the intensity that works for you. I usually prefer to stay on the elbows. For me, this is a good intensity, so I'm going to stay here. Everyone can find their own challenge level. And then slowly release, and then just release your elbows to the side and rest your forehead on the hands. Take a few deep breaths into your lower back, into the belly. It can feel really soothing just to lie here and notice. I'd like to imagine a loved one putting their hands on your lower back. Gently making circles, massaging that area. And you can breathe into that space. Feel how you can hold yourself in this loving way. And then roll over onto your back. Bend your knees and place your right ankle on the left knee. Now thread the right hand through the gap in the legs and hold your left leg. Hold behind the thigh or around the shin. Or if all of this is a little bit hard, you can even just hold that top knee and pull it closer. Now as this is the yin part of the practice, there's no special activations. In fact, the more we relax the feet, relax the spine, relax around the hips, the better. So just do the very minimum amount of effort just to hold the shape, but nothing more. And then feel this invite to Rest down. This invitation to drop something that was holding you back before. Maybe it's some physical tension. Maybe it's a negative thought. Maybe it's some worries or doubts about the future. Maybe it's something in the past you haven't quite let go of. Here's the invitation, it stays open. 
or when you're ready. I'm building in little pauses of silence because we tend to have so much noise and communication already in our daily lives that it feels really nice to just listen. And then keep the legs in this shape but just release your hands so the left foot can come down and then with the right ankle still on the left knee drop everything to the left side and there's two options here one is to prop up the left elbow and then with the left hand gently push the right thigh away but my preferred one is to just hold the front of that ankle and use that to pin the right foot down onto the, the floor or the mat. This is it, we have arrived in our new shape on our journey to more grounding, more softening, more intuition and empathy, which is really what the world needs a little bit more of, you could say. We have enough of the rushing, the challenging, the pushing, the growing with effort. We can use a little bit more of the feminine qualities, even as men. Especially as men, I must say. Turn your attention to the breath and just feel it flow through the shape. There's nowhere you need to rush off to. You have arrived. And then slowly release. Just bring everything back up and place the right foot down. And then take the left foot on top of the right knee. And let's reach through with the hands. Do the same as what you did on the first side. Maybe you're holding the thigh, maybe the shin, maybe your knee above all of it. Doesn't matter, hold on and lie back as comfortably as you can. If you need to prop the head up, or do something to get more comfortable, then please go ahead and then relax the feet. Relax the hips as much as you can. And as on the first side, do the minimum effort needed just to hold the shape, but nothing more. Feel your back comfortably rest the mat underneath you. And feel your mind rest in the body. To pay attention, we can bring some of the yang qualities into yin as well. Where we don't let the mind drift off and become slack, we keep its attention focused on this moment right here and we can do the same in the yang practice where we keep cultivating a yin quality on the inside where we don't let any external challenge rock us off our center completely we stay present and still on the inside even in a chair pose or a core strengthening exercise even when things get harder. 
And in the harmony of these two elements lies the magic, the growth, the connection, the freedom. Gently release the hands, let the right foot come down and then keep the left ankle and the right knee, just let everything go over to the right side. Two options again with the right hand gently support the inner thigh of the left leg. Preferably with the right elbow down so you don't need to make any effort. Or my favorite is with the right hand I'm holding the front of the left ankle just to pin the left foot down to the ground and again see if you can let go of any efforts that is not necessary soften around the outer hips especially the left no need to hold tension around the belly let the belly gently move up and down with the breath. And let your mind rest in the body. Nothing to do, nowhere to go. This is enough. Times your mind might feel very busy, you might come up with uh, impatience, something that needs to be done urgently, maybe a reason why you can't possibly stay in this pose, maybe you should just skip this yin part altogether. Notice that this is a good thing to be, become aware of. Or maybe the yin part is just what your body is comfortable with and the yang part, the pushing harder, was quite an ask. That's also good to notice. And then slowly release. And then come up to sitting. And we often do the Baddha Konasana pose where we pull the heels in as much as possible. But for this one, it's another version, the yin type version. We're sliding the heels quite far forward. So you've got a diamond shape in the legs and then walk your hands and the upper body a little bit forward and just let them relax here i like to loosely hold the toes not really to pull me in but just to relax my arms relax the lower back and soften the shoulders Don't worry too much about the shape that your body is in. Some people will be much deeper, they'll be lying down completely or almost completely. And some people will be much higher up or anything in between those extremes, which is fine. In our yoga practice, we say there are five levels of experience in the body and the physical level 
is just the outer layer. It's just one of the five. The deeper layers require a um, more mental approach, a deeper feeling. And then on the deepest level, there's no more mind focus either. So the focus becomes much more subtle as we dive in deeper into our practice. couple of more breaths just to soften here to let gravity and the weight of your own body pull you into the pose or invite you into the pose there's no pushing or pulling here and then these poses are really great to find like a deep acceptance of where we're at at this moment. An invitation to keep deepening our experience, but not by force, just by coming back to our mat over and over again, giving our body the chance to, to get stronger, more flexible, more balanced, and also more relaxed. None of this happens in a single session, of course. You'll feel some benefits immediately. But many, many benefits are felt over time at a later period, especially if you come back to this practice regularly. And then slowly take your time, lift back up. And without making any sudden movements, keeping that peaceful quality, stretch your legs out and lie down on your back for the final relaxation, the ultimate yin pose. This is called corpse pose. So we're absolutely still. The physical body is resting so we don't have to worry about it or spend any energy on it. Can you feel your body is relaxing more and more with every exhale? Can you let go of 10% more tension that you're still holding, whether it's mental, physical, emotional And start to take a few deeper breaths. If you have a little bit more time, it might be nice to extend this relaxation and stay here for an extra few minutes if you can. Or if it's time for you to move on, then move your hands and move your feet. And then bend your knees, roll over onto your side. And use your hands to slowly come up to sitting. Bring your hands together in front of the chest. Take a moment to 
to feel all the qualities we have practiced and cultivated within us. The yang side, which is active and hot and fast. The yin side, which is cool and grounded and intuitive. And how both can be present and balanced in all of it. Touch your hands, your forehead, to your heart center. And bow to yourself on the mat. Namaste everybody. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. And I hope to see you again soon. Take care.